Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Welcome to Temple Baptist Church. We will welcome those that are watching online as well. Thank you for being with us. I'm going to turn this down because I don't need that much. I have a built-in amplifier. Take a little strain off of our amplifier back there. And uh, let's take our Bibles, if you would, please. We're going to go to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. And when you get there, say amen. We're going to read the first 11 verses. And it came to pass that, as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and caught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they would come and help them. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink. When P Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. I want to teach a lesson tonight on nevertheless at thy word. You know, I, I, I like this and I don't like this at the same time. Uh, just because when you, when you see kind of his, a uh, little bit of, of Simon Peter's attitude, you know, like, we've been fishing at this all night. We've taken nothing. This is what we do. This is, this is our livelihood. This is our expertise. But, okay, and nevertheless... We'll, we'll listen to you, and I'm going to only let down one net versus all the ones that they had. Because, listen, they had just uh, got done They're washing the nets, mending in the nets. That's a great time to do your mending is after, after you go through and you got it all spread out if there's any loose spots. You want to make sure that things are cinched up, that they're, that they're ready to go. For when you do catch some fish... And then they, those little buggers don't get out because uh, some of the rope was not together in the net. But what we should rather do is, is I would like to take this and then we, I'd like to get rid of that first word and just say, at thy word. Not, not telling him what I know, not telling him what my expertise is, not telling him anything, but just listening to him. I think that we would get a lot better responses if we did that. So that's, uh, that's what we're going to be uh, teaching on this evening. Heavenly Father, bless now your word as it goes forth to our hearts. Uh, be with us, God, in this time. And I pray you'd give ear unto the prayer requests that will be mentioned here in just a little bit. I pray you bless this time together. May it be profitable to us, Lord. And I pray that everything said and done would be honoring to you and pleasing to you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. This was a huge miracle that was done by the Lord Jesus here in these verses. And the gospel are full uh, of the gospels are full of the wondrous works of the Lord. And as a matter of fact, there's only so much the world could even hold of the works that Jesus did. 
Uh, otherwise, if they were listed in a book, the world itself could not contain the, 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 the book that should be written. Can you imagine what kind of book? How, how big a book would have to be that the world itself couldn't contain it? You think about all the books and all the libraries of all the world, everything. And the world, I mean, if you take Fox's Book of Martyrs, for instance, that's 3,000 pages by itself. Now, you think about how the, all the encyclopedias, all the dictionaries, all the phone books. <laughs> you, I mean, you talk about all the, all the books and you add them up. The world can greatly contain it. And we got room for more. People still write books every day. There's, there's new books that come out all the time. But when, when, the, when the Bible tells us that when, if we were to list all the works of Jesus, the world could not contain the book. And you think, wow, man, it, 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 well, I know, you know, we get so much of a glimpse of, of what, what Jesus did because without him was nothing made that was made. So everything, right back from creation, all the works, uh, all the works inside every person that ever lived, forming every person that ever lived. I mean, you just think about all the works of Jesus. Uh, this was just one of them. These miracles were recorded to give us insight as to who Jesus was and who he is and who he always will be. In John chapter 20, verse 29 through 31, the Bible says, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. These verses tell us that not everything Jesus did for miracles, signs, and wonders was even listed in this book. Think about that. There's many more things that Jesus did that were never documented because we can't document all of it. But we've been given everything. We've been given the highlight reel. We've been given some of the greatest uh, examples for us to believe. We've been given uh, uh, enough. I mean, you know what? Mankind is kind of weird in the fact that we want a very detailed explanation from point A to point B uh, and, and give us all the little details so that it all makes sense and we don't have to work out anything. We don't have to think about anything. We don't have to ponder anything. We don't have to study anything. If God just flat out says, up, 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 oh, here we go. There were dinosaurs. Now they're not. You know, all, all the different stuff that, that, that is and that was and that is no longer. I mean, God gave us what we need to believe in him. And so that's why everything isn't listed in the Bible. But all the principles to everything are. God's given us things and principles and precepts and statutes and judgments and the way he, his mindset, he's given us all these things that we could, through one way or another, whether it's in context or whether it's an application to verses, that we could, we could apply it to our lives, to our thinking, to our study, and it would help us grow. See, the, can you imagine if, if they just gave, uh, and I, I, have to think about, I have to think about the law because I, I, you know, I've seen Brother Aaron's library. It's huge. It's, it's, it's just absolutely ginormous. All those things, every, and all of that at one point or another he had to be in at some point in his life. Now, can you imagine if they said, okay, well, here you go. Here's a concise thing about the law. Don't worry about, you know, I, we gave you everything you need to know. Just the one book, here it is. And that actually would make it harder trying to go through all this big, huge thing when, when you could go to specific things that have been sectioned so that you could study in that section. 
to, to brush up on a case or to get examples. And uh, they often use examples of other cases and other uh, things uh, that were uh, the sentences or judgments or rulings uh, that, that happened in connection with that type of case that can maybe help them even win their case. But, you know, the Bible is a book that it does have sections. It's a book that contains 66 books, and it's designed to make us believe, but it's also designed to make us study, and we are being taught as we go. I think that's really great. God, God put forth the first interactive learning because he gives you the Holy Spirit as your teacher. And as we study, as we pray, as we look at it, and things jump out and they reveal themselves to us, and we're like, wow, that's a perfect picture of this or that and the other thing. You know, we've been given these things. Now, these miracles were also recorded to give us hope. Romans 15, 13, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. These miracles were recorded for our admonition, right? As a charge to us, uh, as, as, as a sort of rules set forth that we should, uh, a charge to, to, to rem remain in these things. 1 Corinthians 10, 11, Now all these things happen unto them, for in samples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Now, admonition uh, is, is, is also uh, connected with exhortation or encouraging to exhort us on. Now, if we notice, the Lord got into Simon Peter's ship, and he prayed for him to thrust out. So Simon Peter was in the boat with him while he, was, he got on the boat, he says, launch out a little bit, and he taught the people from the boat, but Simon's listening too, because he's on the boat with him. Uh, he's driving the boat. So then uh, when he left off speaking, he gave order for Simon to launch out into the deep and let down the nets, plural, for a draught. That means for a big haul, you're going to get a big load. I want you to let all your nets down because there's a lot of fish. Now, now, this is the interesting part, because as I can imagine, and I use my imagination a lot when I read the Bible, and because it's fun. It's just fun when you do it. And if you don't use your imagination when you read the Bible, shame on you. You're missing out on a lot of fun. So I got, I've got in my mind, I've got Jesus uh, here on the boat, Simon Peter's back there messing around, tinking around with things. Meanwhile, Half the fish in the sea are coming under the uh, are coming just off to where he would be thrusting to. They're gathering as Jesus is talking. In so much, it almost sank two ships that they're full. Giant schools of fish came to hear Jesus preach. <laughs> he was preaching, and here they came, and so. You know, then we have him telling Peter, he says, all right, we're going to launch out into the deep now. You're going to throw out your nets. Yeah, I know you just washed them, but we're going to throw them all out again, and, and you're going to get this big haul of fish. So Peter's like, yeah, nah, we've been all night trying to fish. And so Peter's been up all night, midnight fisherman. He was up all night. They were up all night. Him, James, John, they had both ships out there. They toiled all night trying to get that, and they had taken nothing. Zip, zero, zilch. Struck out. Air ball. Nope. But he says, nevertheless, at thy word, I'll let down the net. Now, Peter didn't have a problem with launching out into the deep. What he had a problem with was the fact that he relied on his own experience that they just came out of a zero big fishing trip, and now they've got to clean all the seaweed and all the stuff off their nets, and now I just cleaned these nets. Now you're wanting me now to go back out into the deep and throw all the nets that I just spent hours washing and, and trying to get cleaned up 
and you want me to throw this back out because of this big haul. Now, I don't know. And they certainly didn't have fish finders back then. They had no fish finder on the boat. But they did have a fish call. Okay, now who remembers Ernie and Bert? You're fishy, 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 fishy. <laughs> you never thought you'd hear that again, did you? And here you came to church and heard it. And then the fish just jump in the boat. I'm telling you, they had a Jesus said it to do it, they should have done it. His teaching gave people knowledge of who he was and the will of God. See, anytime Jesus was talking about who he was, he also brought in the will of God because he was the will of God. He came down in, uh, uh, with God's will for him to come and, and, and be our substitute. So he incorporated that. So it's only after teaching that the Lord commanded him to launch out into the deep. God grows us through his word for tasks that lie ahead. Sometimes you'll get, you'll get taught something and then God will want you to launch out and say, okay, teaching time's over. Now it's time for some action. I want you to launch out into the deep, and I want you to throw everything you've got at it. And so that's what, that's what he wanted Peter to do. You know, when we see in Matthew 28 and 19 and 20, uh, just wonderfully a famous scripture Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am all with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. The Word of God is the agent through which we find faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So for us to have faith, it has to come through the Word. It's not going to come through anywhere else. And that's why we see uh, a lot more troubles happen in the lives of people when they get away from the Word of God because now they're getting not just away from the Word of God. They're not just getting away from God himself. They're getting away from faith, the faith in God, right? We're saved by grace through faith. It's connection. All right, it's the grace of God that allowed it to be by faith. By faith are you saved. <laughs> All right, so the concept is still the same as it's always been. God's always spoken in man in order to produce faith. Man believes God and finds rest and peace in that. Now, Peter has heard God's word. He's been ordered by, by Christ to launch out, let down his nets. Peter explains to the Lord that they fished all night and caught nothing. He's informing the Lord that eh, it's no use, but, you know, nevertheless, at thy word, I'll launch down and I'll, I'll let down, but I don't believe we're going to catch anything. So he told him his expertise and then showed a little doubtfulness because they'd already been there. Listen, I've just been down there. There's nothing there. All right, this would be like the equivalent of you going to a grocery store that had, that had been abandoned. There's nothing inside of it. No food. You walk in there thinking, thinking that you might find something, and you were not there, and you search diligently. Then you, you leave there. Uh, you know, a long time later, you leave there, and then somebody says, Oh, uh, let's go over here and get something. Uh, no, I, I, let me save you. Let me save you a trip. I've already been there. There's nothing there. It's empty. It's abandoned. There's nothing there. And then you say, "Okay, all right." Let it, some people, yeah, you got to learn the hard way. So I'll take you and show you. There's nothing. So then you get them in the car. You take them over there. You walk in and it's full. What? <laughs> What are you talking about? I was here for hours looking for something. There was nothing here. And now there's such a multitude. I, I, I can't even get it. There's not room enough to even get it. 
We're going to have to call for help. And so that's kind of like what, what just kind of happened there. So Simon Peter catches more than all of them can handle in verses 6 and 7. He saw the, multi, the miracle. He confessed his sinfulness in verse 8. It's wonderful to observe that the Lord blessed Simon in spite of his unbelief because a lot of times he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. But this was a special day. This was a special day. This is going to be like, okay, you don't believe me, but you're still being obedient to what I ask you to do, mostly. But I'm going to show you something. Sometimes God will take a little bit of our doubtfulness, and then he'll make us sorry for it. He'll make us sorry for it. Because at the end of that, Peter's like, Depart from me. I'm a sinful, I'm a wicked man. I, I didn't believe you. And now I had to call for help. And, and now we've got so many fish that both our boats are sinking. We got to stop pulling fish in because we're sinking our boat. And that's not the kind of catch and release we're, we're talking about. Where you get to take my boat with you. So, how many times we need to confess that we believe, but help thou my unbelief. If you watch the lives of the apostles, there's some changes that you find in their faith. They received him as the Savior in the beginning. They marveled at his miracles during his ministry. They forsook him and fled in the Garden of Gethsemane. They cowered in fear after his resurrection. They bodily preached after the Pentecost. They died giants of the faith in their end. That was their life summed up in six little things. Paul says, for I have learned. Man, what a great statement. We all need to learn. And sometimes we learn through various ways, including ways that are not as great as we would want to learn. You know, you didn't just wake up with the knowledge. You had to go through the experience to get the knowledge because then now you have that learning, and we just have to learn. So it is not the nevertheless that we should focus on. But at thy word, we will launch out and let down our nets. Can the word of God be relied upon? Of course it can. If God says to do it, then do it. If God says that he will do it, trust him to do it. If God says that it should not be done, then don't do it. And if God says it cannot be done, don't even try it. Don't even try it. You can trust God's word when the enemy seems undefeatable. Psalm 59, 1, deliver me from mine enemies. Oh, my God, defend me from them that rise up against me. Uh, verse 19 of that same uh, of, of Isaiah 59, the Bible says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west uh, in his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Second, you can trust God's word when the circumstances seem insurmountable. In Psalm 61, 1 through 4, hear my cry, O God, attend to my unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tab tabernacle forever. I will trust in the, co uh, the covert of thy wings, Selah, which means stop and think about it. Thirdly, you can trust God's word when defeat seems Im imminent. When you just say, yep, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when this defeat is coming, and that's just how it is, you could still trust God's word, even when you feel like that. Psalm 142, 1 through 7, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, with my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. 
In, in the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me? I looked on my right hand and beheld, there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord, I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The, and the righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Now, fourthly, you can trust God's word when all human help is lost. When there's no other possible, humanly possible way, God can be trusted. God can be counted on to create one. He will create a way where there isn't one. I love that. Uh, he just, he does that so many times. Psalm 142, 4, uh, as we just read, uh, there was no man that would know me, refuge fade me, no, no man cared for my soul. Psalm 22, 11, be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Psalm 37, 40, and the Lord shall Help them and deliver them, and he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. That's an important key factor right there. He will deliver because you trust him. That's a big thing that none of us should miss right there. Trust in the Lord. With all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. But in all thy ways acknowledge him. That means respond. To acknowledge is to respond. To acknowledge him in all thy ways, and he shall direct thy paths. God will make a way, and even when the path is gone, there is no path. And I get down and I walk up to the brick wall. The path is gone. No human can help me. But I can trust in God. And suddenly, God opens the door and allows me to continue that path that he would lead me in. When there was no path. You understand that? That even when there is no way, he will make one. And he will deliver because of our trust in him. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. You know, a lot of times we get caught up and you know what? I don't even want to ask God for help. I don't even want to ask him because I'm not even worthy. I've got myself in a real bind. I've, I've been sinful. I've been wrong. I've been this. I've been that. I don't want to. I don't even feel like I would. I just feel like God would just laugh at me if I ask for help. And we don't ask for help and we don't try. We just sit there and suffer in it. But you know what? We were never worthy. We were never worthy to start with. But he loved us anyway. He saved us anyway. In spite of our wickedness, in spite that we were alienated from God, that we were strangers, that we were, that we were sinners. Even yet while even that when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us and he loved us and he died for us and even when we were just the worst possible anything seemed like we were unredeemable man doesn't it seem like that's almost a thing like if you really didn't know God's grace the way that you know it can you imagine some of the sinfulness that we've seen out in the world that, that, that you would call unredeemable? 
with the murders and the rapes and the bombings and the killings and the indiscriminate shootings and just all the stuff that goes on, the utter wickedness that goes on in our world. And you think, how can that be redeemed? Because you know what? Good thing we're not God. Because we would not redeem those people. We would not redeem those people. It is God because he's God, because he's perfect, because he's truth, because he remembers we are but flesh. He will deliver us even when we're in the wrong. And we don't, you know, it's funny because, like I said, so many times we just feel so undeserving that God would even do it. But he said 70 times 7. If you could come to God and you could repent and you could confess it, you could forsake it and you could try to go on, he will forgive it. He will forgive it. And so we need to remember that. He'll do that. That help will come. Lastly, you could trust God's word when all hope seems to be gone. Job 19.10 he hath destroyed me on every side, and I am gone, and mine hope hath he removed like a tree. Wow. Can you imagine feeling that way? Spending years and years of your life being upright, being love, loving God devoting your family, devoting everything to him. And then to turn around and say, he hath destroyed me on every side. Wow. Psalm 146.5, happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. So our hope is not in circumstances because those change too much. It's not in men because they fail. It's not in machines because they break down. Our hope can only be found in one, one, and that is the Lord. That's the only place we can rightly anchor and have peace that we've anchored there and that it's a sure place to anchor because the foundation of God standeth sure. So if you anchor to a firm, solid, sure foundation like the Lord, there will not be any movement. I shall not be moved because my God is bigger. He's bigger than all of it. Any mountains, any worries, any fears, any problems, he's bigger. There's nothing that he can't handle. So we ought to rem re remember those things. You know, we often sing, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus." And in that song we say, "'I'm so glad I learned to trust thee.'" But learning, is a tr learning to trust is a step-by-step -step process. And I'll leave you with these verses before we uh, have our prayer request time. That's in Isaiah chapter 43. And it says, that's I believe one through, yeah, so I think it's one through four. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, holy, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. So, 
that's going to conclude the lesson tonight. And, you know.